We're recording. Now, <clears throat> the thing, um, you know, there, you know, I go to these twelve step groups, and they have this thing called the Big Book, and they say nothing in God's world happens by accident. Nothing in the universe can happen accidentally. Everything is being orchestrated from a deeper field. So all the people, places, and situations you meet are uh, are divinely perfect in order for transcendence, in order to learn a lesson, in order to transcend it, to release something. So you could, you know, you might see it as karmic, you see, uh, with past lives, things come back, or people, or patterns within the ego bring people, places, situations to you for transcending. So, now I've had quite a thing, like, you know, when you've got an emotionally charged situation, especially with family, uh, that can often require a huge amount of spiritual work, but it's definitely worth doing. Now, one of the things I did, like with my mother who passed away recently, you know, I, my aim with her, and I think I did pretty good in transcending all the hooks, transcending every single hook I had with her. We had a wonderful relationship at the end because there was nothing I wanted or expected from her. And then when I, there was no expectation or outcome, there was pure transcendence of every single hook, but I had to like let go of every single hook that yeah. might eat. Do you mean cord? Is that cord. Yeah. Like, you know, okay, so if my mother would say like, uh, it could be like, um, uh, hooks can be like, if my, my mum would have an expression on her face, my ego would get activated. You know, oh, she's got that look on her face, you know, so then I'd feel triggered. So the hook triggered my ego, yeah, the hook. Or if she said some words, like, you know, she, that, that I perceived as critical, that would be a hook. So there's certain languages she would use. So it could be the expression on her face, it could be the language. It also my habitual things, like what I, my outcomes and expectations of how my mother should behave and what she should be saying to me. So those are all, like, if it didn't go the way I was wanting her to go, that I would get hooked in, you know, I'd get hooked in. Also, like, uh, one of the hooks was, like, uh, uh, she'd watch TV and, have, and she'd tell me her political views, which were not my political views. And she, you know, she might try and, you know, there'd be, she'd want me to agree, or if I disagreed, there'd be a big argument, you see. So it'd be, like, chords or uh, attachments. Attachments, that's yeah. right. So everything, I, my, my, goal, my goal with transcending my mother would be no, nothing she can do, no facial expression, no way she can behave. I would still be in the, being, the beingness or the observer and nothing could, would take me out. And it took me, it took me about three to five years. But after that, there was this beautiful relationship with her. This most beautiful relationship with her. Was, you have transcended every single hook, or if you want to say cord that there was, because all the work was in me, not for her to change, the work was for me to change. And can you say how you did that? How did you remove these hooks, each other? Yes, so uh, it took a few years. Um, well, I can tell you in detail, uh, I mean, I won't go into it, I did do a 12-step program which involved a step four. With batteries? Is that flashing the thing? Oh yeah, okay. If you let me know when it goes off, um, but okay, so um, I did do a twelve-step program, which involved a step four and a, and a step nine. But the main, you know, a lot of the work I did was a course in miracles, which is three hundred and sixty-five lessons, uh, and some of those lessons I applied very regularly. So there would be, I particularly liked. Um, I also was interested in enlightened teachers, uh, Muji and Dr. Hawkins, and the thing is, transcending means, my outcome was that there's not, you know, I was willing to release everything that my mother meant to me, to have no attachment, no outcome, no expectation, to release everything in me that could get triggered or hooked in to her. So, so it was like, you know, and I, I found out like facial expressions, how she's supposed to behave. It's like, I can't, not to be affected by anything she can say to me. She can say whatever she likes. You know, she can be in the worst mood, not to be affected at all. She can have 
the facial expressions which I used to trigger me not to affect me at all. You know, she could talk about political things and not be, and for me not to have any effect or get pulled in or triggered whatsoever. So I had to work on those bit by bit. One of the things I did was, you know, Muji the Observer. So if I got hooked in, say she said, oh, this politician, blah, 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 I like what this politician is doing. Then it would be like, well, if I, there was a reaction, I'd be the observer. I wanted to transcend what's observing my reaction of not liking what she said. So each time I did that, then suddenly it disappeared. It didn't really matter what her views were uh, on politics. Uh, what, and also to, you know, to let go within me how I wanted my mother to treat me or behave. Because if I thought, oh, she should have behaved this way, but then I was pulled into my, well, what's observing that? Is the observer needing her to be a certain, no. Because once you're in the observer, it doesn't need her to be a certain way. It's quite happy whatever she does. The observer has no interest in whether she does that or that, A or B. So each time you do that, it, the ego becomes weakened. It doesn't need political views. It doesn't need her to behave this way. Because the observer is like, pure happiness and presence, which is not hooked in, cannot be pulled in to that field. So do the observer, also do feel the feelings, uh, especially in the early days when I wasn't so spiritually evolved. If I had like huge feelings, I'd be sitting, you know, for half an hour or whatever, just if there's sensations or repressed energies or anger coming up, just allowing those to be experienced and released, you see, you release them. You gradually, if you feel out all your anger every day, Eventually, you don't have any anger in you. You just like feel it all out. Let all your anger go. So over the over the time, then the tr what happened was as I transcended them, the relationship got better and better. You know, it didn't mean I had to agree with her. Sometimes she would say things, I'd just stay this in silence, and then put the topic into something else. I also did something else, which was practicing unconditional love. So. It'd be like, in the early days, it might be she'd say something and I'd feel very triggered or angry. And I'd have to go into my room and process, go to the observer, feel the anger out. But then I'd go back, you know, I wouldn't say anything that was angry at her because I didn't want her to change. It was me, my triggers, not for her ever, to change. So I'd feel those out, then go back and I'd try and see if I could offer a cup of tea. Mum, can I make you a cup of tea? So that was my thing. And over the, over the months and the years, what happened was I would be able to offer a cup of tea even quicker and quicker, you see. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like she'd off, go off on this thing and go like, hey mum, do you want a cup of tea? Whereas before she'd go off into that thing and I'd have to go into my room and feel the feelings and go into the observer and then some half an hour, hour late or the next day go and try and offer a cup of tea because it took so long to let go of the stuff in me that was coming up. So that was the way... Now, this is the thing I want to say when you have difficulties. Look, usually what happens is if you transcend the stuff in you, uh, my experience is miracles happen in the other person after you've transcended the stuff. I mean, you can do the thing of like, uh, you can operate it from an ego level, but you know, you'll have less power and less miracles. Like we do A Course in Miracles. If you want the mir if you try and, if you try and uh, solve a situation from your ego, Let's say, I don't like what you're saying, and I say, look, please don't say that in future. Never say that again. So I, I'm trying to like solve it from an ego level. So it might work, but I'm using ego force, not spiritual power. You see, like, don't, don't say those words, don't do that, don't behave that way. So I'm using my ego force to try and control the situation so you behave the way I want. That can work temporarily, but it doesn't bring miracles and transformation in relationships, because it becomes a push-pull. So is, is the transformation in how you, you choose to react to that specific said behaviour <coughs> or... No, person? well, the I'm, I'm dissolving the chooser, yeah, because the I is the chooser. So what's observing the I? The, 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 the observer of the chooser is not the I. There is no chooser in the observer. So the observing is a pure, pure state. In, intuitive things come out of the observer, but there is no chooser in the observer. It's intuitive, spontaneous, you see. So 
But because you have to see the language in. If there's a me choosing to react, that means there's an I existing. I think yeah, but I think that's what I'm trying to say. So rather rather than saying, please don't say that da, 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 from the ego, yeah, controlling it. Yeah. If when it's said, you just choose to passively let it pass through without reaction, is that the? That's the intermediate stage, yeah. Because you, I don't want, I don't want, I wanted not to interact with her, and it took a, it took a few years. I didn't want to ever control her, you know, like tell her like you have to have a different political view, because I don't, please don't express that. You know, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to transcend it in me until that would have no effect because I'm the observer. Because anything that comes out of the observer is not from the eye. But I have to fully transcend it for the, for the beingness or the observer to be in communication, not my ego to be in communication. Uh, does it make sense? Yeah. So, so then I wonder um, if then forgiveness and acceptance, right, which of course we yeah. talks about, yeah. um, that's not of the ego. However, I feel like it's a very egoic approach to it because then when you forgive, it's implying that something is wrong. Like something at the same time, I think because it's attached to acceptance, when you forgive, it's also another way of just accepting. And eventually, at least like similarly with my mom, uh, where I couldn't stand her before and now I love her, yeah. um, is that I had to just forgive and accept who she was. And like each time something bothered me, I'd be like, well, I forget, like there, I forgive. I feel like there's, and then eventually it got to a point to where I didn't feel like there was anything for me to forgive because I accepted her as she was. That's perfect. And uh, so the Course in Miracles starts off with God, you know, like one of the Course in Miracles lessons, God is love in which I forgive. God is a love in which I forgive. That's what I call dualistic languaging or ego languaging. Mm -hmm. It presupposes there's a me and there's a you and there's a me forgiving a you. Yes? Dualistic languaging. Mm -hmm. Later on in the Course in Miracles, it will say it is realized, uh, uh, it's realized that, um, what does it say? It says something more or less like there is no me. It will be realized later on that there was no me or you or a need to forgive. Mm -hmm. That comes on later on in the yeah. course. So in the beginning of the course, it's talking as if the I is real and the you is real. So it's giving you lessons like, oh, God is a love in which I forgive you. But later on, as you dissolve the me and the you, later on it's the experience there is no me or you and there is no need to forgive. Because it's an illusion that it goes It's an illusion. Yeah. There's only, there's only one of us here. Mm -hmm. See, once you go to the observer of the eye and the observer of everything, there is only one of us here. There's a one oneness here. But when you're identified with I, there's a me. And when, when I feel like I'm a me, then I believe that you are a you. And isn't there a, a separate, isn't there a talk of separate? then that's immediately the ego separating myself from you. Correct. Brilliant. And we lose the oneness. That's right. Exactly it. So until you dissolve the ego, which believes it's a separate I, then you'll always believe that I'm a separate I and you're a separate I. And then I'll say, I have to forgive you because I believe I'm a me that needs to say I forgive you. Is there you. a concept of accepting yourself in that then? So by accepting that behaviour or... Um, are we then acknowledging that in the oneness we are all human, so we all can be it annoying, we all can be controlling, we can all be aggressive, we can all be, you know, we can all be all things. You know, we were talking about that unlimitedness. Uh, yes. So if I choose to react to what someone says to me, yeah, am I then not acknowledging that that already exists in myself? Maybe I don't exert, you know put it out there, but in my own humanness, the behaviour that I'm reacting to maybe is part of what makes me human, or makes us that oneness. Well, is, is the oneness human? Okay. It is, okay, she knows, the human, she knows that. Yeah. So the, mm. the, 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 the isness of the oneness of the observing is not human. Okay. It observes the human. But in the observing of the human, the human disappears and you become the beingness. And what makes us human is just our physicality. Yeah, and the, and, and the belief systems, mm -hmm. their thoughts. 
So once you transcend that, you're not you're in the realm of the spirit or the oneness, which is transcends the the, the limited ego's perception uh, of of life or the the illusion, you see, the illusion of separation. So the um, the beingness is not uh, the witnesser is not human. You see, the human is the identified ego, which creates the illusion of separation. So when you said um, to dissolve the ego, because I know it talks about it in the course also, is that um, the ego, I don't even say it's like an evil necessity, but um, it talks about how in a way we kind of need the ego, but we can never truly dissolve the ego, like the ego has a purpose. It says that in the course? Yeah, it talks about the ego's purpose, and the ego's sole, great, uh, sole goal is to kill you. Right, like the oh, the ego's purpose, but you can transcend yeah. the ego because yeah, it's a course in the Yeah, but could you ever live, be in existence without the ego? Of course you can. That's what the, what, what is, what is the observer? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, right in the grand scheme you can, but... Look, I was talking to this gentleman just a few minutes ago. When you were in the, when you were in the presence, was your ego there? Mm, no, no. I think so. no, but is it possible to 24 7, 365 yes, days, but that's your what, entire life? Yes, to be that, that, the that's ego? called enlightenment. When you're 24 hours a day in that state, that is called enlightenment. It's not that hard. It is hard. Not is many the people ego do. Necessary? No, it's not necessary. So why do we have it? <laughs> because that's why we're here until we transcend it, until you become enlightened. Yeah. Look. Like, if he can do it for a few seconds, if he was devoted to being in that and transcending his ego as the number one thing in your life, and not going back into that and having the discipline to do that every minute, you know, he would make progress. You know, like, let's say today, this, a gentleman is like, starts to do this work, is like 99% of the day in his ego and 1% is in presence. But if he was, that was the number one thing in his life, to be in presence all day long, and he did that for three years, yeah, with that being his sole goal, like many people are just devoted to enlightenment. They'll just be, devote themselves single-mindedly just to be in presence and not to be an ego. So he might start off on day one, like 99% of the time, an ego, 1%, but within a year, he might be like 30% of the day in presence, and 70% of the day in ego. Within like 10 years, he might be like 99% of the day in presence and 1% of the day in ego. And then can we, in the attaining of that, yes. still have ambition, goals? Well, well, does, I mean, ambition, I mean, Isn't that ego-driven? That's ego-driven. Like, I mean, the I wants to get a goal in the future, which is the future it's got nothing to do with presence. Okay. So I'm just confused. That, um, so I want to put on an art exhibition. Now I know I've opened that statement up with I want. You, know. you, you, you start to, you have to switch fields, okay? okay. Because in pre the more you go into presence, you realize the presence, things happen and are created out of the presence, but they don't come from the ego. Mm. Right, but there's a lot of things you know. You know, the, the more you're in the observing field, you have to transcend a lot of the fears of the ego to be in there. Like, if I'm in the observing field and I just be in that field, like, well, I, I need my ego to make money, I need my ego to plan for the future, I need my ego. So, all of these fears will arise for you. Like, if you don't, if you don't think, if you don't plan everything if you're not like having t hundreds of goals and working it all out then you won't make any money and you'll die mm. okay so this is the thing with surrender you have to be willing to transcend those fears you don't have to transcend them but if your dedication if you try like if you ever meet an enlightened teacher and uh, and something intuitively knows that that's the truth. They're in a place which is the truth. And that's the ultimate for what this place is all about. 
and they've transcended their ego and your heart, something deeper in you, knows that's what's your path, then you have to face all the ego fears and let them go, you see. So one by one you transcend them. But if there isn't that call to transcend your ego, then you can just stay in your ego, see. Your ego can like plan, do everything, orchestrate, so there isn't that inner inspiration to let it go, which is fine. But for some it's called like, you know, like of course in miracles is to transcend the ego. To go to that place which is constantly timeless. It says in the Course in Miracles, we're, we're reaching a place which is timeless and formless. Mm -hmm. It is limitless.